Hey crew, welcome to the Spiritual Social. I'm Lexi, your local light worker. I thought I would create for you a collective tower reading because we are still under the beautiful energy of the winter solstice or Yule, the pagan holiday that celebrates the return of the light during the longest night of the year. Yes, that may seem contradictory, but this is a moment in time when we are reminded that an ending contains a beginning, that death is also a rebirth and it is a beautiful metaphor for what is going on in the world at the moment when the collective seems to feel burdened saddened overwhelmed and tired we feel like a world is ending not actually the world and this is mostly because of the energies that we have in the sky we have Saturn in Pisces and the North Node in Aries pulling a lot of energy into this military form of masculinity that we see so heavily revered and honored. And it is dragging energy away from femininity because the South Node is in Libra. So wherever South Node or the Ketu energy is, that's what's being drained of light and force. Almost at the cutting point of the age of the Aquarius, right before things are going to get headily progressive and really fast in, in kind of like in a turbo accelerated way of change, we are seeing a resurgence of patriarchal, systemically oppressive, masculine, almost like toxic masculinity, hyper masculine um, energies. And I felt that it's fascinating because the ancient Romans, around the time when the sun moved from Sagittarius and into Capricorn, zero degrees Capricorn, which is considered to be winter solstice energy, they had a week-long celebration called Saturnalia. And this was a celebration in the honor of the god Saturn, um, or Kronos, the god of time, limits, karma, the hard taskmaster, the actual ruler of the sign Capricorn. By the way, if you're a Capricorn and watching this, happy birthday Capricorns! <laughs> Hope you're having a blast. During Saturnalia, the ancient Romans also worship a goddess that I happen to work with. Her energy is phenomenal because she is the goddess of wealth and riches and good luck. We have here the goddess Fortuna. She's carrying this corn and inside of it there are supposed to be some fruits and nuts and berries and all sorts of riches that you don't really find so easily during the cold winter months. But you have them if you have been very hard at work to gather them and to preserve them throughout the entirety of the year. So Goddess Fortuna helps those that find a way to help themselves. She is the one that comes and gives you the, the top up after you have managed to begin um, a financial or material endeavor. We have her here to preside over this reading. I wanted a divine feminine energy that is wealthy and undeniable, a divine feminine energy that is also pure hearted but can also counterbalance resurgence of patriarchal energy. And what better thing to do than to go back to our ancestors, or at least my ancestors, the ancient Romans, and to draw from their wealth of celebrations and mythology and rituals. During the celebration of Saturn, the goddess Fortuna was worshipped, the divine masculine and the divine feminine coming together in a variety of celebrations, celebrations that were related to all the hard work that people have endured throughout the year, Usually winter solstice was a time when people had to kind of like come together and share the things that they have worked so hard to attain with their loved ones. Okay, so as I was talking, the cars just swam down onto my carpet, which is a good indication that it's a wonderful moment to start. The messages are impatient to pop out. So I have here a whole stack of oracle cards. I recently was gifted the seasons of the witch in bulk oracle thank you so much dasha if you're watching this thank you you have my gratitude now because i received the deck i feel compelled to create a reading for you guys so let's just jump straight into the messages and see what the witches have to say the witches under the guidance of goddess fortuna for winter solstice by the way just as um 
a trivia fact, maybe you would be curious to find out where the word solstice comes from. It comes from Latin and it is the combination of two words, sol meaning sun, which also happens to be the name of my second cat, <laughs> and also sitere, which meant standing still. So a really interesting astronomical phenomenon was observed by our ancestors which made um, the sun, in the northern hemisphere at least, um, as it was passing at the beginning of the constellation of Capricorn, it made the sun look almost as if it was standing still. So that was part of the reason why this period of time was considered to be so special. Now, from the Witch's Oracle, the first card that we got is fascinating. Number 14, Sigils, Symbols. A sigil is basically a sign that you create and you infuse it with magic, with an intention, with an affirmation. You assign it a specific skill. For example, you create a sigil for protection and it's related to a lot of the creativity that you can pour into it because you can create your own sigils, your secret codes that nobody can decipher but you. Now, from the Oracle of the Witch, yes, I have an Oracle called the Witch's Oracle and the other one is called the Oracle of the Witch. We have here number 42, Crone, Release, beautiful energy, and she's holding a full moon scepter. We are approaching the cold moon at the time at which I'm filming this. We are nearing the full moon in Cancer, the final full moon of this year. The cold moon, as it was also known in the Farmer's Almanac, was celebrated right after Yule. And it's a beautiful time to think about everything you have done this year and also plan for the year ahead. Capricorn and Cancerian energies are very much about protection, um, following rules and regulations, honoring the ancestors, staying close to family, to traditions, and about planning, you know, structuring how things are going to be like. So the crone is actually the third tripartite nature of the goddess. As you guys know, Hecate, the goddess of magic, appears in three shapes as the mother, maiden, and the crone. And we have here the crone as the incarnation of wisdom. Let's continue. I also want to see from the tarot, the witch's tarot, what is the major arcana energy that we are under during this winter solstice magical time. Oh, the devil. <laughs> okay, well, this is Capricorn. This is Saturn. So we are in its domain. Yeah, the devil can be quite um, a fearsome fellow. But if you think about the fact that during a season that is supposed to be ruled by Saturn, also known as Satan, um, we actually have the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So it's fascinating, right? How the light contains the dark. How the devil rules over a season in which we have the Son of God being created. Dualities, right? Complexities. Maybe there is something here about Understanding that what we sometimes fight with or against is part of ourselves. We see so many conflicts and divisions and separations in the world at the moment. Well, maybe that thing that we're trying to attack, that we're trying to exterminate, is actually a part of ourselves that we hate. Something that we have become, that we find shameful and we want to hide under a rug or we want to obliterate or project onto another individual. That very thing doesn't need to be projected. It needs to be taken back into ourselves and loved and accepted. We also see a lot of judgment and criticism in the media. He said this, she said this. Oh my God, let's judge, let's nitpick. We live in a society overwhelmed by analysis paralysis. This is the devil's energy at work keeping us low, keeping us grounded to the point where there is only low vibrations in the collective. But the witches are here to save the day. Now, I'm going to pull from the seasons of the witch. I'm going to begin first with the Beltane seasons of the witch. Oh, 
They all slipped under my bed. Oh my goodness. So first of all, something is coming. A message is coming in. Second of all, there are some hidden intentions. Some things that you may not want to know. Third of all, something could be spoiled or dirty. Because, yes, there is some, some dust under my bed. But the card that we got is Love Spell. Romantic communications. A romantic message is coming through. One that is very sweet, but could also have been rotten in the past. Have been dusty. Something dusty is being dusted off and is coming back to life. Hard work is required or was required in order to create this situation. Let the honey of your soul swell in the depths of love. Open up your heart and see with your soul's eyes, not just with your normal human eyes, because they can deceive. So the love spell is an invitation to fall in love, an invitation to allow yourself to be charmed by someone else, to not be so resistant to love, so sarcastic, so closed up and afraid. Now, let's see what the Yule Seasons of the Witch Oracle has to say. Number 21. So the love spell appeared with number 21. 21 days from now. Okay, we have the Ponsentia. And this is number 27. Cast the shadows, scream silence at them, dear witch. What lurks inside transforms into the most beautiful of beauties. <laughs> so this is a flower that we usually have around Christmas. Um, and it's fascinating because it's such a contrast. Red and green in uh, on the color scheme are contrasting colors. So again, we have these opposites, these dualities. We see in the conflicts in the world at the moment how religions are clashing, right? Um, a nation is fighting against another nation that emerged out of it, basically. We see the conflict between independence and forced dependency. And the conflict between the young and the old. But as I mentioned earlier, the season that is ruled by the darkest of lords is actually the season that brings us the greatest light bringer, the greatest hope bringer, the savior of humanity. At least in its essence what Jesus Christ represents. I'm not a particular Jesus Christ fanatic. So, we're going to go down to the basics right now. And this is the OG, the Seasons of the Witch Samwin Oracle, or Halloween Oracle. The first one I got, which was given to me by Araceli. Thank you, Araceli. So, let's see. The Dark Moon, a period of rest, self-containment. A period of sleep and getting in touch with unconscious desires right before we launch. In the dark of your heart lives new breath, waiting for you to release its ghost. Something that's been weighing you down, something that's been blocking your heart, needs to finally be taken out of you. The toxicity, the venom, the poison needs to be renounced. It needs to be barfed out. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry for the visual. But as you can see, let the ghost lie. You have to give it up. Give up the ghost. Just like in the Radiohead song. Give up the ghost. Things are coming full circle. You will no longer need to struggle with a particular issue that's been obsessing you. Now, guidance from the Mabon Seasons of the Witch Oracle. Wow. Queen of the Dead. And I know exactly what this energy is about. So at the moment, we have the final time, the final moment, when the Sun in Capricorn is going to be conjunct Pluto. It's loosely conjunct at the moment. The conjunction is going to become stronger next year as we are about to walk out of Capricorn season and enter Aquarius season. Aquarius season is going to be the game changer next year because it will be the time when 
well, Pluto is going to change signs from Capricorn into Aquarius. So passing things on, it's also the celebration of Passover, right? Um, but actually passing things on, passing, moving things forward, one generation gives to the next. One situation transforms into something much better. One love relationship is finally left so that another one can bloom. So the Queen of the Dead, Pluto energy, Scorpio. And we see how she's holding the Dark Moon. And the Dark Moon is all about giving up the ghost. As we are creating a special place in our home, bringing flowers, which mean that passion can bloom again in our environment. Even though it is a season marked by a lot of harsh, maybe family circumstances in certain cases, maybe restrictions, we see economic fears. At the same time, we need to be wise enough to look inside of ourselves and understand that there is more to meet the eye. There is more than meets the eye. Sorry guys, Mercury is retrograde. I'm, I'm really trying to express it as best as I can. There is still honey in this picture. There is still sweetness coming up. And we have the power to write our own story. We have the power to save ourselves. We don't have to wait for anyone. The Queen of the Dead has the following message. Fear not the rage of fire living within, for it is the power of your fierceness waiting to taste you fully. Don't be afraid of your darker side. Don't be afraid of your shadow energy. Embrace it, love it. For that which we accept about ourselves and are honest that we also contain inside is something that we are controlling. Whereas if we just project it onto other individuals, we end up waging war against someone that's very similar to us. But we can't see them as similar because we hate ourselves and we don't want to acknowledge that we hate ourselves. So that's where the drama lies. And now from the final oracle, we have here the Imbolc Seasons of the Witch. This is the one that was recently given to me. It arrived just two or three days ago, so I haven't had time to study it properly, but I'm just going to take a chance and see what card comes up. The North Star, number 32. I am an embodiment of what I seek, walking with purpose while focused on my path. I couldn't have said it better. L let me just read it again. I am an embodiment of what I seek, walking with purpose while focused on my path. Do the best you can do in your own life. Treat people with kindness. Treat yourself with compassion. Show up each day and do the best you can. This is all that is required of you. You don't have to absorb the weight of the world on your shoulders. You don't have to get overwhelmed and to empathize with everything that is in the collective. Even though if you are a star seed, if you're a light worker, you will feel tempted. You will wake up in the morning and feel this heavy energy. We are a connected organism. If one part of us suffers, the entirety suffers. So it is important at the moment to still show up and to try as much as possible to do the best you can in your own little world, in your own little niche. Because believe it or not, that little world actually means so much and it helps heal the collective. Your little part of the great organism that forms mankind, if you take care of it, it will heal itself and hopefully somebody else will take care of it and it will heal itself and we can create bridge upon bridge upon bridge and bring something wonderful into being. So wish upon a star. The next new moon is going to be revelatory. And we also have here three. A cycle of three months. Three months of growth. I see also some travels by boat. It could also be explorations. I just want to show you guys the cards again from the specific seasons of the Witch Oracle. Because they are gorgeous and we have so many gorgeous energies. Sure, things may look dark. Sure, I pulled the devil. 
but so what? We can still overcome this dark energy. And most importantly of all, I just want you guys to know that you all, you, my soul family, the one watching now, you are my North Stars. And I do apologize if this year our communication was a little bit stagnant and blocked. I know that I haven't been showing up with the same kind of energy that I used to have in the past because I've been dealing with a lot of healing in my own life. The North Node is conjunct Chiron, has been for the whole year. Saturn conjunct Mercury. I had a lot of blocks, a lot of emotional issues that I had to deal with, pain in my body. But like a mother that loves her children, I didn't want to overwhelm you with my problems. I wanted to protect you from them. And I don't know if that was the best decision. I think that the best decision would have been to just kind of like talk to you guys about everything that's been going on. So I hope that in the next year, and I hope you will be here with me because you matter so much. And I hope that in the next year, we can find solutions to everything, to all these problems. But in the meantime, I just want you to know that for this holiday season, for this winter solstice celebration, if you're feeling low, wherever you find yourself in this big, beautiful world, just keep in mind that you are a light that illuminates the dark. Without you, the darkness will grow thicker, bigger, worse so please stay please show up thank you so much for listening i hope that you found this reading encouraging and i'm sending you so much love from me goddess fortuna who's been guarding over this reading over here on my bed and the witches keep in mind that you're loved